A smooth and successful installation of a new carburetor is directly related to the removal of the old one. If you're also replacing your intake manifold, when you get under your hood, take a minute before you start disconnecting. Pull the air cleaner off and have a look around to orient yourself to the engine bay. Taking notes and labeling components now will make all the difference for the installation of your new Holly components down the line. The first step for everyone is to pull the negative terminal of the battery. This will make sure that there's no risk of a spark igniting a fuel spill. Now to begin the removal of your old carburetor, start with the labeling of the existing vacuum lines, electrical wiring, and fuel supply. Put a piece of tape or some other tag on the lines and now you can start pulling vacuum hoses. Keep a close eye on the lines as you pull them. If they seem brittle, cracked, or if they're loose, it's going to be a good idea to replace them. Either swing one end out of the way or label both ends and completely remove the line. For the fuel supply, start with a shop rag under the connection point. If the engine was run recently, there might still be some fuel pressure in the line. Safety glasses are a really good idea to keep fuel from spraying into your eyes. If you pull the fuel hose off the line, it's a good idea to plug the open fuel line to prevent spills and debris from getting into the line. Now pay close attention to the type of connection that your existing throttle cable has to the old carb lever. Some kinds will slip off. Ball type connectors can be popped off by prying with a screwdriver or wrench. From here, your particular carburetor might have a few accessories that you'll need to remove. Some carbs have an AC kick-up solenoid and bracket that'll need to be pulled off the intake or the carburetor. Ford-style transmission kick-down linkages will have a locking ring that you'll pull and then the kick-down arm will slide off the carb throttle lever. Other brands that have transmission kick-downs will normally have a cable with a connector that should easily pop off or slip off the throttle lever. If your car has cruise control, usually you only need to clear an attaching setup that might be connected to the throttle lever. When it comes to the choke unit, you'll either find a divorce choke with a lever that goes into the intake manifold. In that case, just disconnect the connecting rod from the choke plate assembly. You might have found a hot air choke that will have one or more metal tubes that bring heated air or exhaust into the choke unit. The tubes will either thread out or will be pressed into a manifold and you can just pull them out of there. If your engine has an electric choke, it should be as easy as labeling and disconnecting a wire or two. When everything's clear, all you should have left is the carb mounting bolts or nuts. When all four are out, it should be easy to lift the old carb off the engine. Be aware there's still fuel in the carburetor. You can either remove one of the lower front primary fuel bowl screws and drain from there, or you can turn the carburetor upside down and the fuel will trickle out of the carburetor vent that's in the top of the body. When you're all done, you want to cover up that area before you walk away to get your new carburetor.